Polymaker is known by most for their large range of high quality filaments. But did you also know that they made hardware? Years ago I got to play around with their polisher, which mists IPA inside of a chamber onto prints made with their polysmooth or polycast filaments, smoothing them and removing layer lines. A little over a month ago they reached out asking if I was interested in testing out a new piece of hardware that they'd been developing. There wasn't much info, but they made it clear that all that they were hoping for was some feedback. Polymaker's been a big supporter of channel projects, and the idea of them releasing a new piece of hardware had me very curious and I agreed. Well, this ended up being the Poly Dryer, a compact filament dryer that doubles up as a dry box storage system. I've had it running almost non-stop since its arrival a month ago as I've been working to print out a bunch of PETG parts for an upcoming project. We've covered a handful of dryers on this channel, but this is a pretty unique take on it. So in this video, we'll take a look at the unit, cover its specs, and I'll give you my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB fabrication, 3D printing, and CNC services. Their 3D printing services include everything from FDM, SLA, SLS, and even SLM technologies. I tested out both their nylon SLS as well as aluminum SLM printing and was blown away by the results. For PCB fabrications, they offer both bare and populated boards. They even have a section for open source community projects for quickly sharing designs. Links are in the description below so that you can find out more and check out all that they have to offer. Polydryer is comprised of two main components, the box that holds your filament and the unit it sits on top of that does the actual drying. Separating the two might not seem like a big deal, but it gives the platform modularity, allowing for mods, future add-ons, and the ability to use the top portion as a filament storage dry box. Starting with the box, the main portion of this is completely clear, making it easy to see what filament is stored inside. Inside the housing for the lid is a gasket that mates with the top of the box. Two latches hold the lid in place and form a very hard seal to ensure it's airtight. As far as compatibility, the maximum recommended spool size for the poly dryer box is 205 millimeters tall and 78 millimeters wide. Based on the spools that I've checked here, that means that it should be compatible with most spools that are one kilograms or less. There will be some exceptions to this, as I know over the years I've used a few spools that have been slightly larger, so this is something that you will need to confirm. It also means for now that it is not intended for large spools. For feeding filament directly from the box, there are four bearings and two rollers that the spool sits on. There's also two grommets, one located in the top front of the lid and one in the top front of the box to feed filament through. These have a small plug, so you can easily seal these up when storing your filament. The unit comes with a really beefy PTFE tube that has a 6mm outer and 3.5mm inner diameter. This gets pushed into the grommets so that there is no friction when printing from the box. Although I haven't ran into any issues with the roller wheels, if you have a cardboard spool that has smashed edges, they include a spool roller so that you can use the center hole of the filament instead of its edges. This little piece just goes through the center of the spool, and then there are clear rails on the vertical centers of the box that act as a positioning guide and stopping point to keep the filament elevated. Hopefully this isn't something I'll have to use very often, but it is a clever feature. Each box also includes a hygrometer and a small desiccant container. You'll fill this with the included color changing desiccant and pull the tab on the hygrometer to activate the battery. This sits nicely at the base of each box, letting you see relative humidity inside. The desiccant will help to preserve the filament when it's being stored for longer periods of time. It also gives you a visual indicator and turns from blue to pink as it absorbs moisture. This lets you know it's doing its job and running the box on the dryer will recharge these by removing the moisture inside. I did want to touch a hair more on the desiccant. Around two weeks ago, I saw a post stating that the blue desiccant contained cobalt chloride, which is carcinogenic. I did some digging into this, and although there definitely is data on this, it seems like the primary cause for concern is if you ingest it. Once it's inside the box, you really shouldn't be interacting with it, but I'm also not a material scientist, and you'll have to decide for yourself whether this is an issue for you. Having a 14 month old that puts everything in their mouth, I found out that there is an alternative desiccant that goes from orange to green when wet, 
so I picked up a quart of that from Amazon. Based on what I'm seeing, although you still would not want to ingest it, it is a safer alternative. It looks like I can easily fill up at least 20 of these boxes with the quart that I purchased, so if anyone's interested, I will have the specific one linked in the description. On the bottom of the dry box are two removable feet. These are friction fit and surrounded with gaskets to ensure a seal. Now let's take a look at the drying unit. Compared to the dry box, this is a fairly small device. On the front, there's a backlit screen and four buttons for interfacing with it. Both sides have small vent holes and the back has the power jack and on off switch. On the top of the unit, we have our two openings that push and pull air from and into the dry box along with a drying chart. This shows the three different modes the dryer can operate at, which filaments you want to use with each mode, and how long each filament should be dried before printing. To dry filament, place it into the dry box, pop the feet off of it, and set it on top of the dryer. Then flip the switch to power it on. Pressing the M button lets you cycle between the three different drying levels. The plus and minus buttons let you increase or decrease dry time in 30 minute increments for up to 24 hours. Pressing the play pause button starts the dryer if it's not already running and stops it if it is. There's also a continuous mode if you don't want the dryer to automatically shut off. Make sure the dryer isn't already running and hold down the M button until the dryer beeps. Two arrows forming a circle will display on the top right of the screen, letting you know that you are now in continuous mode. With this, the dryer will only stop running if you manually stop it. Inside the heater base is a 65 watt PTC heater and a fan for circulating air. This draws in air from the box in the front, passes it through the heater, and kicks it back into the box from the other side. There's no seal between the box and the base, so this combined with small vent holes on the side allow for the moisture to escape. One thing I found odd about this dryer is that the min and max temps were not listed. I don't mind the three nozzle low, medium, high that they used as I think it's simpler than trying to remember specific temps, but I would like to know what the poly dryer can actually reach. Polymaker does have an explanation for this in their FAQ for the dryer, but I wanted to at least run a few tests and see what I came up with. For this, I used my thermocouple thermometer and attached four sensors to it. I taped one at the inlet of the box, one at the outlet, one center of the box, and one taped to the back upper portion of the dry box wall. I then set the dryer to each of its three temperature modes and had it run for half an hour. The main temperature I was really interested in seeing was the output temperature. What is this heater putting off? This definitely fluctuated as the heater got up to temperature and then tried to maintain that temperature, but the lowest level setting got me to roughly 50 Celsius. The medium level was right at around 60 Celsius and the highest level was at 70 Celsius. The middle of the box and the inlet was about 10 C lower than this. I also took my thermal camera and checked where the hot air pumps out on high mode and it confirmed just south of that 70 C. For filaments like TPU, PVA, or PETG, I don't need to get to those higher temps, but if I'm trying to dry something out like nylon, I like to see that the unit can reach right at that 70 Celsius, which to me is sort of the sweet spot. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been cranking out PTG parts on the Prusa Mark IV and have had the dryer running nonstop to make sure that there is no moisture in the material. It's done a great job and I've really enjoyed having this compact form factor, especially when it is sitting on my workbench. Since noise is something that we talk about often, I did want to get a quick reading to see how loud this dryer is when running. At about one foot away with the dryer running on high speed, it averaged approximately 51 decibels. I wouldn't say that the dryer is quiet, but it's definitely quieter than some of the other dryers we've tested. The combination between a dryer and a dry box system is something that has really grown on me. We've looked at bag solutions for keeping filament dry, but they take more effort, don't look nearly as nice, and it's harder to tell what's inside of them compared to this clear container. It's because of this that I really haven't stuck with using them very much. I've also looked into DIY dry box solutions for some time, and I love how my buddy Josh's storage solution looks using a combination of cereal boxes with printed adapters, but the added benefit of slapping them onto a dryer and just having a turnkey solution is really convenient. So what are my thoughts based on using this dryer or this system for the past month? Well, let's start with the good. The system's well thought out, does what it says, it's really compact, and being able to purchase the dry boxes separately to store commonly used more moisture prone materials is awesome. I already picked up a second dryer and a couple more of these storage containers. But it's not perfect. 
On my early unit, I noticed that the print on the buttons seemed to be wearing off. I made the recommendation to Polymaker to have the characters on each button stick out a bit so that way even if the paint were to wear off, you could easily tell what each button was still. I also think that it would help with accessibility. I also don't love that this unit beeps. It's a small detail since it only happens when you start, stop, or change modes, but it scares the crap out of my dog and having a setting to disable it would be highly appreciated. Also, the adhesive used for the stickers that show the power levels started bubbling on me fairly quickly, and I have a feeling it will want to start peeling in the not so distant future. In the grand scheme of things, these are all fairly small nitpicks, and I don't doubt that Polymaker will end up fixing these in a future revision. I wish there was an option for larger filament spools, especially for drying them. It's something I've talked about many times, but due to the modular nature of these, I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that might be coming in the future. If Polymaker decides it's something that they're not interested in, there's already been a handful of community mods popping up, and I think it's only going to be a matter of time before somebody comes up with a solution that will allow you to use the bottom dryer assembly with some sort of a larger container to dry out bigger spools. I like poly dryer and I think that this drying storing solution is going to be really popular. If there's one thing I could see holding it back a little bit, it is the cost. When you compare the box at $30 to other dry box solutions that are not DIY, it's at or even below the competitors. However, the dryer with the box currently goes for $80, which is higher than many of the other smaller size dryers that we've checked out on this channel. If they can somehow bridge that gap, perhaps with bulk discounting for those that want a couple dryers or a couple of the boxes, I can really see this picking up even more adoption in the desktop filament drying space. And that has been Poly Dryer, the filament drying and storage solution. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions that you had. As always, if you have additional questions, let me know in the comments down below. And if I don't have the answer to your question, I have no problem reaching out directly to Polymaker to try to get those answers for you. Also, let me know in the comments down below what your initial thoughts are. As I mentioned earlier, we've covered a lot of drying solutions on this channel, but I do think that the implementation of sort of the modular base with these different boxes is a pretty unique twist on this. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I will have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.